In every life, there are a number of highlights. There are births and deaths, weddings and anniversaries. And for those of us fortunate enough to have the benefits of coming to a university, graduation. Graduation ceremony is an occasion for happiness and joy, perhaps tinged with relief. For you, the graduands, congratulations on what you've achieved. No doubt, it is as a feeling of satisfaction at a job well done. To the parents and the friends and those who have supported the students during the time in Aberdeen, congratulations also and many thanks for your support. You will view this occasion also with a sense of pleasure and also of relief, probably shared with your bank managers. Graduation is a time of new beginnings, ending old associations. Many of you will have come many miles to study in Aberdeen, and this city by the sea will have been your home in recent years. Your lives, your daily lives, will have been constructed around your studies and your socializing with your fellow students. As you go out into the wider world and you make your careers, you will be forming new associations. You will form new allegiances, allegiances to a profession, be it law or medicine or accountancy or an academic discipline of science or engineering. But I hope that you will not lose your contact with the university because one of the new associations that you join is the general council of the university. And as a member of that council, you have the right to participate in the election of members of the council to represent you in the governance of the university. And these members of the general council elected to the courts of the university contribute greatly to our well-being. I hope very much that you will keep in touch with your alma mater. You will undoubtedly have made friends while you've been here that will last all your life. Those friendships will rem constantly remind you of what I hope has been a happy stay in Aberdeen. Wherever you go in the world, you will find alumni associations, groups of fellow graduates of the university who gather together from time to time to remind themselves of the happy times they had with us. You will have formed associations with departments and faculties, and I hope that you will re renew these frequently by visits to the city. Now, before we go to the ceremony, the graduation ceremony, in which you are going to be the recipients of degrees today, let us take a look at the surroundings in which you've studied in the last few years and the city which has been your home.
the chaplain for the university. Let us pray. God of all wisdom and truth, creator and sustainer of our universe, upholder and source of all knowledge, we praise you this day for the skill of the human mind to understand, to shape our environment, and to influence our future. As today we celebrate human achievement, keep us mindful of the sacred nature of all knowledge and the responsibility that knowledge imparts, that we may use wisely the skills acquired in this place in building a world fit for future generations, in caring for that world to the benefit of all humanity and the glory of your name. Amen. Let the company be seated. <laughs> Professor Sewell. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honour of presenting to you for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, Ina Allen Robertson Baxter. Chancellor, it is singularly appropriate that we honour today someone who is so closely associated with one of the outstanding business success stories of the North East Scotland. Be different, be better is not just the watchword of Baxter's of Speyside, it is also what we should strive for as a university. Our honorary graduate was born and brought up in Aberdeenshire and received her education at the Gordon Schools Huntley. It was here that her lifelong interest in and talent for drawing and painting were first made manifest. Indeed, such was her talent that on leaving school, Ina progressed to Gray's School of Art where she trained as a portrait painter. War inevitably disrupted her studies, but in a way which presaged her future career. Ina went to work for the Ministry of Food at the Torrey Research Station, where she had her first, but by no means last, contact with food processing. The fact that Baxter's of Speyside continues to flourish owes not a little to Ina's contribution ever since she became part of the Baxter's story in 1952. Whether it has been through her own interest in product innovation and development, quality supervision, or rushing around the world from the United States to Australia, Canada, the Far East, and virtually the whole of Europe, selling and promoting their products. Vice-Chancellor, Baxter's is the family firm. It is particularly pleasing that so many of Ina's family are able to be with us today. Already, the fourth generation of Baxter's, Andrew, Audrey, and Michael, are making their mark. And indeed, a fifth generation is waiting in the wings. Today, Ina is a non-executive director, but now has a little more time for other things. Time to spend with her grandchildren, and time to return and foster that initial talent, painting. But we are especially grateful 